Hey all, we're here today with the Code Forces Caucus. It's the Div 4. So, all right, here we go. Let's see how we do it. Choose any two to make a sum greater than 10. So, probably this is the easiest way to do it. Greater equals 10. Okay, so yes. Oh, that is not how you see it. How do you submit? I'd really like to submit. I'd really like to submit. Oh, come on, two oh oh, two oh oh. I do that wrong. Oh, the index. Did that go through? Do I have to do it again? I could just do it again. There's no downside to doing it again. Okay. All right, there's a word written vertically. It's always an eight by eight. No, eight. Remove some and then rearrange. Okay, so, right, so we need to sort them to start with. Okay, I see. So we're kind of looking for where the brace are.
So we're trying to do this. So class with zero. Oh, that's when you have to remove. I missed it again. I missed it again. All right. Keep getting more penalty than we need to. Unexpected. What? One, two, three, four, and I have two, two, three, six here. Is that it? Oh. Very basic equation. Oh, it's oh, it's like s plus w squared. No, it's s plus two w squared, which is s squared plus four w s plus four w squared. Right, so. So basically what we have is some s squared plus 4 w times this. I mean, uh, I, I'll just be lazy. This is times n, this one is times low then I'm just trying to take overflow I don't need this page I need this oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. don't miss this one okay, cool so this here Quite a Q, all right. If 
Dot I hops AI units forward. Every pass. Okay, I got it. So, oh, this is still a case template. Is this still a case problem? This is still a case problem. They're all case problems. Got it. Okay. of trap. Oh right, right, right. just do this and then it's still in a queue, wow. It's quite cute. EFG, <laughs> okay. Oh. Just have four lines. Okay, that's yeah. I see. I can't type int. Okay. Plus one, plus plus. I mean, that was pretty simple. Just minute they each got a wrong answer. Ooh. We need some more servers. All right.
Oh, we just need to. Okay, so we just have a graph, and I need to check the graph. What's the easiest way to do this? I mean, we can DFS. Probably just DFS. So we have two things. We have if depth may is then it's already been visited. If depth may now equal depth no plus d. Otherwise, we're going to self. Are we going to set depth nay? to right, so it's a zero just Seven minutes behind Bucket Potato. Oh, I still lost geothermal. Oh my god, that is bad. It's all these little... back in a bit to explain these all right so the contest is finished and we ended up in fourth place um, actually just two minutes behind first place which is a little unfortunate but 
Either way, we can go through and let's help all these problems. So, eight problems, A, B, C, uh, through H. Um, I'll just go in order. Um, first couple should be pretty quick. Um, first problem, you got three digits. You want to know if any two of them can add up to greater than or equal to 10. Um, this one's very simple. The way I did it, just make an array, read in the array, and then you can sort it, and you know which are the biggest two. Check that, and then print yes or no. Not really much to explain here. Um, just a very simple problem. Problem B. Um, basically, you've got a whole bunch of responses. You want to find which one has the highest quality, where the number of words is the most 10. Uh, and so yeah, you just set up a loop, do it. If A is at most 10, and then B is greater than the biggest one we've seen so far, update most. And the key thing here is to track the index because that's what we actually need to output. Um, so again, pretty simple, just some basic programming here. Problem C, uh, yeah, we have an eight by eight grid and we're looking for a word written vertically. Everything else is gonna be dots. Um, so this is actually the easiest way to do this. You don't even have to locate the word. You just go through the grid and instead of a row major order, you do column major order. So you notice that I did J first and then I. And if it's not a dot, we just add it to our word, output that. This is probably the simplest way. Um, yeah, so that's problem C. All right, problem D. This is the first problem where you probably need to do a bit of like logical thinking here. But basically you want to end up with, um, you, you have a set of values. You want to end up with some subset of that where you can reorder them so that the difference between any two consecutive values is at most k. Um, so in this case, you know, we definitely want to sort it so that we can get the consecutive values as close as possible. And then it's going to turn out that there are certain like segments of our sorted array that we can use. Uh, basically, those segments are separated by consecutive pairs where the difference is more than k. If the difference is more than k between a consecutive pair, we need to either cut off one side or the other. Um, and so we're, we're essentially just like finding the segments that are, that have a gap in most K. So for example, let's say K equals one and we have like an array like this, one, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 11, uh, 12. Then, you know, we would essentially have segments that are separated like this. Um, the reason being three and six are too far apart. Eight and 10 are too far apart. And so we're just looking for that. We're just trying to find the biggest segment. In this case, it'd be four. It'd be either the first four or the last four. Um, and so that's what we do. We just iterate when we find a consecutive pair where the gap is bigger than K. We just consider that to be the end of the segment. Check the segment, start the new segment here, and then make sure to check the very final segment. And that's it. And then we just output N minus big because that's the number that we're gonna remove. So that's D. Um, all right, problem E. So problem E, um, here we're trying to find this like border width for all these cardboard squares. Uh, and we know the total area of all the combined squares. And so here we have a little bit of uh, algebra, right? So we have, we basically have S plus two W squared, which is S squared plus um, 4w times s plus 4w squared. Oh. All right. And um, yeah, basically, oh, that's too big. Um, basically, we're going to add this up across all the s. And so, oh, this should be a plus. In that case, what, what we're looking at is sum of s squared plus sum of s times 4w plus or w squared times n equals c. Um, we're trying to solve this equation in terms of w. So there's a few approaches we can do here. One is we can use the quadratic formula. Um, with that, you need to be a little careful because you're gonna deal with floating points and precision issues. And you need to be careful to solve the answer properly for integers. So you wanna like double check it later um, after you get a result and just make sure it works. And maybe increment or decrement as you need. Uh, the other thing you can do is notice that like the value on this side is strictly increasing when w increases. And so you can 
set it up as a binary search as well. That's what I ended up doing. Um, we just need an upper bound on the answer. Uh, one thing that's a little, a little tricky is we don't want to overflow this calculation uh, mid times mid times n because that could get pretty big. And so what I actually ended up doing was, well, clearly if this is equal, then four, we can move this to the other side, right? So what we have is like four w squared times n plus four, four w times sum of s equals c minus sum of s squared. And so clearly that means that, let's call this the goal. What that means is that four w squared times n is less than the goal. And so w is less than uh, square root of goal divided by n divided by two, right? And actually, oh, I actually divided everything by four. So I actually set it up in my code. I set up this. And so now you're solving this. Yeah, and so in that case, you can you have this constraint and this constraint. And so this is what I use as my upper bound. You can see it right here in the code. Um, and then you just do a simple binary search. Just compute that. If it's less than, you bump it up. Otherwise, you bump it up. Uh, you take that as the max. Um, yeah, so that's it for E. Um, yeah, main thing to get tripped up on in this problem is, you know, floating point imprecision or overflow. You just need to be careful with your numbers. All right, from F. Um, yes, here, so you have a number of frogs. Uh, each frog has a hop length of AI. AI means they go to AI, 2AI, 3AI, and so on. You want to find the most common um, landing point. And yeah, so here we basically just take all of our, um, we just take all the values. Um, oh, and we're only allowed to go from 1 to n for the uh, common point. So we only care about frog hops that are at most n. We just count the frequency of those. Then we count how many we can trap at each point. And this just works like a sieve. It's like a prime sieve if you've seen that before. Um, but basically for every x, we just iterate through all the multiples of x and add um, frequency of x to the amount that we can trap there. And this, if you haven't seen this, this looks like it might be n squared, but the actual, the reality is that this is n plus n over 2 plus n over 3 plus... And this actually ends up being n log n. So that's the key idea there. Um, just run a sieve like algorithm and find the maximum value. Um, so, yep, that's problem F. Problem G. Okay, in problem G we have these eight directions and we wanna find how many pairs of points can we set up that are exactly aligned in one of these eight directions. Um, and if you, if you take a look at, so let's consider this point here, right? There's basically four lines that we care about, uh, where another point can lie on the line. Um, and for each of these lines, there's kind of a unique determining function to define that line. For the horizontal line, that value is just y, right? All of these have the same y. For the vertical line, that value is x. All these points have the exact same x. Um, for this diagonal line, that value is x plus y. And that, you might want to think about that a little bit, but basically any pair of points on this line has the same value of x plus y. Um, and any, any pair of points that are not on the same diagonal line this way are different in x plus y. And then similarly, this line is gonna be x minus y. So yeah, we essentially have like four values that define the lines that they're on. And we can just count how many pairs of points are on the same line for each of these four types of lines. Um, in terms of code, this actually ends up being very simple. I just make four maps um, reading the point. And then this is a little bit of like tricky C++ syntax, I guess, but basically we take the value, add that to our total, and then we increment it afterward. That's what this does. And so yeah, so we have the X, we have the Y, X plus Y, and X minus Y. And that's everything. And then we do twice that value at the end because the pairs are ordered. You know, you could do A, B, or you could do B, A. Um, so this is going to be n log n. You can make it O of n with some different techniques. You could use a hash map. Um, just be careful not to run into a situation where your hash map uh, just gets attacked for collisions. 
So map is map is guaranteed n login, so I just went with that here since it's shorter to code. All right, that's G. And lastly, we have one more problem, problem H. Um, yeah, okay, in this problem, we get constraints. We want to place the soldiers on a number line. We get constraints where a pair of soldiers have to be separated by, you know, this distance um, in a particular direction. So we know which one's in front, which one's behind. And we want to figure out if all the constraints can be satisfied. Um, this turns out to just be a graph problem where if you have a connected component, you can determine, you can pick a root, set that to zero, and then all the other nodes, you can determine where they need to be based on a spanning tree, for example. And then if you have extra edges, you can just verify those edges um, that they match up with the spanning tree's values. Um, so in terms of solving this in terms of code, it's just a DFS. Um, we just read all of the pairs, make an adjacency list, make a graph, and then here, in terms of this, in terms of this code, it's a little bit, uh, one thing that's interesting is I use this depth array as also the visited array. It might be a little clearer to do it um, this way instead. So this is just depth not being infinity means it's not visited yet. Or sorry, it means it has been visited. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we don't actually need this anymore because I set it to zero. Yes, so if it has been visited, we just check that the values match up. Otherwise we set the value and then we go there. Uh, so this should also work. Let's see if I can actually submit it. I didn't even run the test cases. Oh, it doesn't work. What did we do wrong? Um, Oh, it should be this, visited me. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's basically what we're doing. Um, if our neighbor has been visited, we just check the constraint, make sure it works. If not, we set success to false. If we haven't visited there yet, then we need to set the depth and then uh, DFS there. And then we just need to hit all of the different comp uh, connected components. And so code ends up being pretty simple, um, pretty short problem in terms of um, final results. Um, but yeah, that is, there we go. Yeah, that is the full contest. Um, cool, anyway, thanks for checking this one out. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.